In this video, we'll talk about graphs and transformations of logarithmic functions. So let's start with kind of developing a base case here. So let's look at log base 2 of x as a function. And let's just bear in mind that the inverse of this would be 2 to the x. These two functions are inverses of each other. So if we look at <clears throat> 2 to the x, we know that looks something like this. It's very, very close to the y-axis or x-axis, and then it takes off as x increases. And let's bear in mind that if I want to find the graph of an inverse, I have to reflect it over the y equals x line. So if I was to graph log base 2 of x, it would look something like this. And it has this idea of, okay, instead of being next to the x-axis, it reflects. Now it's going to go along the y-axis and kind of take off away from the y-axis. So this is what a logarithmic function looks like on a base case. Now obviously if we think about 2 to the x being different from 3 to the x, well the same thing would be true as if we're looking at log base 2 versus log base 3, log base 4, so on. And it turns out this overall shape is generally maintained, it's just depending on the base here, will have altering degrees of steepness. And that's okay. So it turns out that for transformations of logarithmic functions, everything we've learned about transforms for polynomials, exponentials, and rational functions, the same thoughts apply for logarithms. If we look at a, b, c, and d as constants, each one has an effect on the graph. Let's start with b. So b, this is going to dictate what kind of family of function you're in. Much like for exponentials, if you're looking at 2 to the x versus 10 to the x, there's going to be some slight differences, but the overall shape will still be the same. That's exactly what b does here will have our shape of a logarithm, but it's just going to be an altering degree of steepness. So if we move on, let's talk about A. A, much like what we're talking about with polynomials, rationals, and uh, other exponential functions, this is going to alter your steepness. And if it happens to be negative, well, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So, has the power to make it steeper, it also has the power to reflect over the x-axis if it's less than zero. <clears throat> if we look at C, this is our horizontal shift. And this one behaves counterintuitive to what you would think. Negative is going to move it right and positive is going to move it left. And then our last one is going to be D, and this is your vertical shift, and positive is going to move it up, and negative is going to move it down. Now we have the same kind of logic that we can apply here. We can talk about shifts of logarithms. It doesn't come up too much because usually you use logarithms to solve exponential equations. That's their main power. And we rarely, rarely are concerned about the graph of a logarithmic function. But it's something that's worth bearing in mind here. So this is more of an FYI than anything else. <clears throat>